Your survival knowledge is a greatest hits compilation of lies. Every trick you learned from movies, every hack you bookmarked on Instagram, every so-called ancient trick you heard by a campfire is just dressed up folklore. And folklore has a body count. Nature doesn't grade effort. It just eliminates errors. It doesn't care that you meant well or that the advice seemed legitimate. Physics, biology, and basic chemistry will kill you while you're still convinced you're doing everything right. You're not prepared. You're rehearsing someone else's fantasy about how survival works, and the director of that fantasy has never spent a night below freezing. The lies you believe aren't just wrong. They're confidently, dangerously, catastrophically wrong. And confidence makes them worse, because you'll commit fully to a technique that accelerates your own demise while thinking you're being resourceful. So let's examine six timelines where people trusted the conventional wisdom and learned the hard way that conventional doesn't mean correct. In timeline 23R, they drank alcohol to stay warm. The temperature dropped to 20 degrees. They had a flask of whiskey, emergency supplies, right? Alcohol creates a warming sensation, dilates blood vessels, makes you feel cozy. They took three shots and felt immediately better, warmer even, confident. Except they weren't warmer. They were dying faster with a smile. Alcohol dilates peripheral blood vessels, which moves warm blood from your core to your skin. You feel warmer because your skin temperature rises temporarily. But that's heat leaving your body, not staying in it. Your core temperature drops while your nerves lie to you about comfort. It's like opening windows during winter and feeling the breeze while your furnace works overtime. The warmth sensation lasted 20 minutes. The hypothermia lasted forever. Their core temperature dropped two degrees before they realized something was wrong, and by then their judgment was impaired. Alcohol plus cold equals cognitive failure. They made increasingly worse decisions while feeling increasingly confident about them. They died feeling warm. Their skin was flushed pink from vasodilation. Internally, their organs were shutting down from cold. Alcohol doesn't generate heat. It redistributes it poorly and lies about the results. Feeling warm is how hypothermia ends you. In timeline 59K, they rationed food to 300 calories daily. They had six energy bars, 1,800 calories total. If they stretched it to 300 per day, supplies would last six days. Very responsible, very mathematical, very fatal. The human body at rest burns 1,200 to 1,800 calories daily, just maintaining organ function. Add cold weather, stress, and physical activity, and that number doubles or triples. They were burning 3,000 calories while consuming 300. The deficit compounded daily. By day three, their body started consuming itself. Muscle tissue broke down for energy. Cognitive function declined. They became irritable, confused, unable to make good decisions about when to move or rest. The energy bars were still in their pack when they collapsed from exhaustion trying to walk two miles. Rationing food doesn't extend survival. It extends dying. Your body doesn't operate on a budget. It operates on demand. Insufficient calories mean insufficient energy for thermoregulation, movement, and brain function. You don't live longer on less food. You just live weaker until you can't live at all. Starving slower just chooses a longer death. In timeline 81M, they drank from a crystal clear mountain stream. The water looked perfect, clear, cold, flowing over rocks with that pristine wilderness aesthetic. No visible contamination, no weird smell, no algae. They drank deeply and felt refreshed. Nature's fountain. Four days later, the diarrhea started. Giardia doesn't care how Instagram-worthy your water source looks. The parasite lives in cold, clear, beautiful water because it's carried by wildlife whose digestive tracts are upstream from your drinking spot. Clear water means nothing. It means light passes through without particulate interference. It doesn't mean sterile. It doesn't mean safe. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, and chemical contaminants are all invisible to human eyes. Water clarity is an aesthetic property, not a safety indicator. The Giardia caused severe dehydration through constant diarrhea. They couldn't retain fluids. The more they drank, the worse it got. They died next to an abundant water source because they confused visual appeal with potability. The water was clear. Their intestines were not. Clear water kills you without warning. In timeline 34H, they drank liquid from a barrel cactus. Cactus water. Everyone knows this one. 
Desert Survival 101. They were dehydrated, spotted a barrel cactus, cut it open, and found liquid inside. Victory over the desert. Except, barrel cactus liquid isn't water. It's a toxic alkaloid solution that causes vomiting, diarrhea, and accelerated dehydration. It's a chemical defense mechanism to prevent exactly what they were doing. Consumption by desperate mammals. The liquid was bitter. They ignored it. The immediate nausea should have been a warning. They ignored that too. Within two hours, they were vomiting and losing more fluid than they'd consumed. The compounds in barrel cactus are harsh enough that some species have been used as purgatives and emetics historically. They went from dehydrated to critically dehydrated because they trusted a myth that conflates cactus stores water with cactus water is drinkable. Some cactus species have potable fluid. Barrel cactus is not one of them. They died thirstier than before they found the plant. Barrel cactus liquid. Poisons desperate people. In timeline 67T, they pulled a tree branch from their abdomen. The fall impaled them on a broken branch. It penetrated three inches into their lower abdomen, missing major organs but creating a puncture wound. Their instinct was immediate. Remove the foreign object. They pulled it out. Blood pressure dropped within seconds. The branch had been acting as a plug, applying pressure to severed blood vessels. Removing it eliminated the pressure, and blood flowed freely from the wound. They tried applying pressure externally, but internal bleeding doesn't respond to surface pressure. Penetrating objects, whether branches, metal, or debris, should stay in place until surgical removal. They provide structural support to damaged tissue and mechanical pressure to bleeding vessels. Removing them in the field creates uncontrolled hemorrhage with no way to address internal damage. They bled out in four minutes. The branch, lying next to them, was relatively clean and could have stayed in place for hours during evacuation. Instead, they removed it based on instinct that felt right and was catastrophically wrong. Removing what's holding you together finishes the job fast. In Timeline 49S, they ignored hypothermia risk because it was 50 degrees. Hypothermia happens in winter, right? Freezing temperatures, snow, ice. It was 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Chilly, but not dangerous. They wore a light jacket and kept moving. They'd be fine. Hypothermia begins when core temperature drops below 95 degrees. Air temperature doesn't need to be freezing, it just needs to be below body temperature combined with conditions that accelerate heat loss. They got caught in rain. Wet clothing loses 90% of insulating value. Wind increased convective heat loss. They were cold, wet, and losing heat faster than their metabolism could replace it. The shivering started within an hour. They kept moving, thinking activity would warm them, but they were burning calories they didn't have while their core temperature continued dropping. By the time confusion set in, a symptom of moderate hypothermia, they weren't thinking clearly enough to recognize the danger. They died of hypothermia in above freezing temperatures because they conflated cold weather with winter conditions. Heat loss is about the rate of thermal transfer, not the ambient temperature. Wind, moisture, and inadequate insulation kill at 50 degrees just as effectively as at 30. Freezing is about heat loss, not the temperature outside. None of these people died because information was unavailable to them. They died because their brains chose the wrong information under stress. Survival myths persist because they feel actionable. They offer certainty when uncertainty is terrifying. They give you something to do when doing nothing feels like dying faster. Confidence is comforting. It feels like control. And the human brain loves control even imaginary control. Stress short circuits reasoning. Cortisol shuts down long-term thinking and hands the wheel to habit, instinct, and whatever advice sounds the most confident. That's why simple, repeatable lies outperform complex truths. Not because they're better, but because they're easier to remember while panicking. The real danger isn't ignorance. It's misplaced certainty. Real survival works backwards. Instead of asking, what should I do? You ask, what kills me fastest if I'm wrong? Because survival isn't about finding the best option. It's about avoiding the irreversible mistake. Anything that promises quick results, sounds universal, requires no testing, or feels empowering without effort should immediately make you suspicious. Good survival advice is boring. It's conditional. It depends on context. 
it admits uncertainty, and it often tells you not to act yet. That's why it loses to myths in calm conditions and saves lives when things fall apart. The fix isn't memorizing rules. It's building a mental filter. If advice ignores physics, biology, or time, you discard it. If it relies on confidence instead of consequences, you question it. If it sounds simple enough to sell, you assume it's incomplete. Survival favors people who delay action long enough to choose correctly. Not the ones who act fastest, not the ones who feel smartest, the ones who hesitate just long enough to not die stupidly. Stop trusting inherited wisdom. Start questioning it. Because the lies you believe feel true, only because you've never needed them to work. That's not validation, that's luck. And luck is a terrible survival strategy. You don't need better advice, you need fewer lies. So the question isn't which myth fooled you, it's which one you'd still trust when it finally matters.